We also have Mr. Nilesh Shah, who's the member of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister and the Managing Director of Kota. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for speaking to us on the broadcast. I'll take the questions to you first. I'm sure you must have heard about this report. The Prime Minister has also written about this SBI report. Is it fair to conclude on the basis of this particular report, on the basis of the income tax returns, that the middle class in this country has expanded? So there are three Indias in some sense. One India which has per capita GDP of France. One India which has per capita GDP of a middle income country like Indonesia. And one India which is still living at per capita GDP of sub-Saharan Africa. Undoubtedly, there is a shift of people from living standard of sub-Saharan Africa to middle income standard like Indonesia. And from middle income standard like Indonesia to developed world like France. Right. Obviously, there are lots of people living at sub-Saharan Africa level. But there is also a fact that a lot of people are shifting upwards. And that is what SBI report has demonstrated using income tax data. There is upward mobility for living standards in terms of per capita GDP hmm. from bottom to middle and from middle to top. Sir, sir, I understand the various categorizations within the middle class that you're making and that leads us to a more informed discussion about the story of rising India. That's also something that the Prime Minister spoke of. But in your understanding, in, in, your, in your experience, as I argued earlier, there is also a lot of consolidation that has happened in Indian economy with the more informal sectors, quote unquote, becoming formalized in many ways. The tax ambit has also increased. I go back to the SBI report. Is there data, is there substance to argue and conclude and reach to the point that there has been a rise in the income of the middle class, to put it simply to you? Undoubtedly. And in last 10 years, India has become from 10th largest economy to 5th largest economy globally. Yes. We are on our way to become 3rd largest economy over the next 7 to 8 years. Hmm. This growth is driven in some sense by the per capita growth in India's GDP. Right. So there is a remarkable movement from bottom to middle and middle to top in terms of GDP as well as per capita income in last 10 years. Hmm. So I, I want to touch about uh, the, two, uh, the two factors that I spoke of. Um, the increasing tax ambit, this is something that this SBI report also talks about, that more and more people are now for filing tax returns. Uh, the number of people who have come forward and filed tax return has only increased with time. The fact that GST has played a huge role. Is this consolidation of the informal economy? And if yes, are we likely to see this consolidation in the future as well? And is that one aspect that we should Keep in mind while reading the results of this SBI report. So when GST was launched, there were about 60 lakh business units which were paying GST or registered under GST. Hmm. Now, now that number is about 1.3 crore. This almost 100% plus increase in GST registered entities right. is due to both the things. One some registered entities which were not paying GST earlier are now paying and some new entities have come. As we have moved from $1.8 trillion to $3.7 trillion economy, right. formalization of economy has happened, but also newer ventures and newer businesses hmm. have created growth opportunity. Absolutely. So, uh, there's the facet of how many people have been pushed out of poverty. Uh, I, I certainly don't want you to talk about the politics around this issue. But one of the key arguments which is often made is that the government must substantiate or any government for that matter must substantiate the number of people it has been able to pull out of poverty. And only then we can make an argument that the middle class has expanded. Though these two arguments may be separate in nature but are deeply correlated and interlinked. 
how much merit in this argument that more and more people have been lifted out of poverty because some argue there is not enough data to, to argue that. So there are multiple ways to point out differentiated facts. There was a time when government subsidies had huge leakages, whether it was 50% or 80%, that is anybody's guess. Right. Today, thanks to Jandhan, Mobile and Aadhaar, direct benefit transfer is possible. Hmm. Government benefits reach out to intended recipients and leakages have practically become zero. Undoubtedly, okay. when benefits reach to recipients, hmm. it results into lifting out of poverty. Right. The second thing is per capita GDP. Hmm. If we look at per capita GDP from below $2,000, it is now $2,600. That's right. Some have benefited more, some have benefited less. Hmm. But undoubtedly, the entire Indian ship has been lifted. Yes. On one side, we are providing free food to 80 crore Indians because of COVID pandemic. Now that also will mean reduction in poverty as more people are able to get nutrition. Okay. In India, whatever you say, opposite is also true because as I mentioned, there are three Indias. Yes. Some people enjoying French level per capita GDP. Some people enjoying Indonesian level per capita GDP hmm. and many people unfortunately suffering from sub-Saharan Africa GDP. If you look at them, you will feel like India is poor and backward. If you look at other side, you realize that India has indeed moved forward. Sir, you, you talk about the different level of poverty, sub-Saharan African level of poverty. How many people we've been able to pull out from those levels of poverty? I believe that should be a point of discussion as we talk about rising India. So instead of looking at past, we should look at future. Why are poor people in India? Well, in 1980, India and China were similar in per capita GDP. Today, China is five and a half times bigger than us. China became manufacturer to the world. We were left behind. Hmm. Now, fortunately, the bus which we missed in 1980 hmm. is available again. Right. Globally, people want to shift their business out of China because of China plus one policy pursued by Western world. Right. We have to ensure that this time we don't miss that bus. All the global companies, we bring them to India, help them set up their large factories, create jobs, create development, create growth and ensure that everyone is lifted below poverty line to above hmm. poverty line. Hmm. 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 I think the biggest opportunity for India today is to become manufacturer to the world, yes. capturing China plus one opportunity. Right. If we can create 10, 15 crore jobs and shift people from agriculture to manufacturing stroke services, that will change India's growth orbit and move a lot of people from sub-Saharan Africa style sub-Saharan Africa level GDP to middle income GDP. So, uh, absolute pleasure always to listen to you, but I'll reiterate on the first question that I'd asked you as we, as we began this discussion. Is it fair to conclude on the basis of a, of a report whose you know, core data are the income tax returns that the, the income levels for the middle class has increased or perhaps we need more data for that? So undoubtedly in India, income tax is not paid uniformly or yes. equ in equality by all. Salaried class income tax compliance is comparable to Western world. But in agriculture, there is no tax. There are many farmers who are earning crores of rupees and are not paying any tax. So we will never know what's happening on agriculture side. Right. On business, tax compliance is improving, but it is still comparable to African nation standards, not comparable to Asian nation standards. So income tax is giving us directionally what is happening to better compliance in business and full compliance in salaried class. It demonstrates that in India, more people are becoming richer and are paying tax. 
but there is still a reasonable part of parallel economy where many people are not paying their fair share of tax all right uh, sir so it's an absolute pleasure to always have you on the broadcast thank you so much for sharing your expertise and thoughts with us on the show